My, what big rims you have. My, what bright eyes you have. Oh. All the better to tease you with, my dear. That was good. Where to? Get ready to spin your own tail. Introducing an all new crossover Toyota CHR. Toyota, let's go places. Against South Korea. This game was originally scheduled for 1 o'clock and it was bumped up earlier. And now we are playing today at 10 a.m. As you get a look at the North Carolina Tar Heels, who come into today's game with a record of 12 wins and two losses and are 8 and 0, tied for first in the ACC. And let's quickly get to the starting lineups first for Anson Dorrance, who is in his 39th season at North Carolina. Starting in goal will be the junior, number 13, Samantha Leshnack. The outfield players include number four, sophomore attacker Bridget Andrzejewski. Number six, redshirt freshman Taylor Otto. Number eight, senior midfielder Abby Olinsky. Number 10, redshirt senior Joanna Boyles. Number 14, sophomore midfielder Morgan Goff. As play has gotten underway here at Coca Booth Stadium here at Wake Med Soccer Park. You also have number 15, sophomore attacker Zoe Rade. Number 16, junior, de junior defender Julia Ashley. Number 17, freshman striker Aaliyah Hyatt. Number 18, senior midfielder Megan Buckingham. And number 19, freshman attacker Alicia Russo. Tar Heels are going from left to right on your screen wearing all Carolina white shirts with black numbers and blue shorts as you see the Louisville goalkeeper. Number one, Gabrielle Cuzelos. Redshirt freshman receiving that cross. Here's Louisville's lineup. They come into today's game with a record of nine wins, one draw, and six losses, and are three, one, and four in conference play. The outfield players include number six, sophomore defender Ariana Ferraro as the ball over the top is towards Aaliyah Hyatt. She's into the box. Ball deflected off of Ferreira and off the crossbar. And the first corner kick of the game here in the second minute goes to the Tar Heels. You also have number eight, uh, sophomore defender Neve Nelson. Number nine, freshman midfielder Molly Rouse. Number 10, freshman midfielder Amina Ekic. Number 13, sophomore attacker Brooklyn Rivers. Number 14, junior defender Gabrielle Vincent. Number 15, sophomore midfielder Callie McKinney. Number 17, senior defender Inger Bierke as the corner kick by Joanna Boyles is off the foot of Ashley. It falls to Rade, and Rade dribbles it out of play. You also have number 20, freshman uh, senior attacker Allison Price, and number 23, sophomore attacker Allison Whitfield. The Cardinals are head coached by Karen Ferguson Days, who is in her 18th season and the winningest all time coach at Louisville. With Carolina at the top, tied at the top of the ACC at 24 points, and Louisville with 10 points, positioning for the ACC tournament, which would be uh, in a week's time, is definitely on the line as Currently, the Tar Heels are tied atop the standings with the Duke Blue Devils. Blue Devils are also 8-0, tied with the Tar Heels. Louisville, coming into this weekend's fixture, is currently tied for eighth with 10 points. And would love to make it to the ACC tournament for the first time now in their fourth year in the ACC as the free kick is headed back by Goff. Ball still loose in the box and it's out by the Cardinals. As Amina Ekic is the lone striker up top. And Andrew Jeske could not get the, receive the pass. North Carolina going in their patented 3-4-3 defensive setup. As Buckingham tries to find Rade, picked off by Vincent. 
And now the Cardinals with a spell on the ball. Not the best, best pass though by Price. It's, it's a good feed through the lines to Zoe Rade. Left footed shot. And Cuzzello saw it all the way. Both teams going with the same starting 11 that they played in their last game on Thursday. North Carolina were just completed a four game road trip over the past few weeks. They concluded it with an excellent performance up in Blacksburg, defeating the Virginia Tech Hokies four to nil. Louisville celebrated senior day on Thursday as they hosted the Demon Deacons and they played to a goalless draw after 110 minutes. Good header by Bierke. And now here's Rouse on the ball for the Cardinals. Highly pressured by Goff and by Boyles. So good control from the young freshman out of England. Looks like offensively Louisville playing in a would play in a 4-3-3, but defensively when they lose the ball, they drift those uh, attacking players drift back into a 4-5-1. And now here's Boyles trying to go over the top for Aaliyah Hyatt. Now here's Buckingham to Boyles, the two seniors linking up. Now Rade in a bit of space. Rade with a touch. And a couple touches trying to thread it through. And it's picked off by the Cardinals. Good tackle though. And the challenge by the freshman Aaliyah Hyatt out of Santa Barbara, California. Hyatt scored the fourth and final goal as four different players scored in that 4-0 win. Over the Hokies, two of them, obviously Ashley. And Hyatt getting their first career goals as Tar Heels. Louisville with a good mix of young players, freshmen and sophomore players, with several experienced defenders at the back. And here is one of them, Gabrielle Vincent. Header by McKinney. Rouse trying to win that challenge against Taylor Otto and unfortunately loses out. And now the center back is trying to look for Boyles. Picked off by Bierke, now finds Brooklyn Rivers. Trying to slip it through for Ekic. And it's good defending by Abby Alinsky. Amina Ekic, number 10 for the Cardinals, leading the way in terms of goals and points. The freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky. Linsky trying to find Alicia Russo. Russo has been absolutely excellent for the Tar Heels the last several weeks. Russo, a week ago, was named the ACC Offensive Player of the Week, and she was also named uh, to the Top Drawer Soccer National Team of the Week after... She had an excellent performance, a couple of performances against uh, Miami and against Wake Forest at the start of that four game road trip. Russo scored the game winning goal down in Coral Gables against the Hurricanes and then she scored both goals against the Demon Deacons. There's a good chance for Allison Whitfield, but it's good defending by Abby Alinsky and Leshnak comes out. Alinsky usually plays in the midfield, 
but she is playing, she's also played defender for the past several years. That is because uh, last week, this past week in practice, uh, starting redshirt senior Maya Worth suffered a season ending injury and had surgery this week. So that left center back position now filled by Alinsky and Morgan Goff has stepped up into the starting line playing that holding midfield role. Tenth minute here, still no score. Good header by Price. Dealing with Rade as there's a throw for the Tar Heels. Linsky over to the far side in Buckingham. Russo's come back in support. Russo now switches the field to Andrew Jeske. Good pass from the Englishman, Englishwoman. Andrew Jeske couldn't split the defenders. And now Rouse gets it out to Whitfield. Ekic is in support. She's trying to slip through, create space for Whitfield. Though it's good defending by Julia Ashley. Ashley twice has been named the ACC Defensive Player of the Week. And so far this season, with how North Carolina has been 8-0 in conference play, a lot of different players have taken the lead and taken the mantle to how good this Tar Heel team has been. It all started down in Tallahassee when they defeated the Florida State Seminoles and ended that 36 game unbeaten streak that the Seminoles had at home, which dated all the way back to 2014. Dorian Bailey scored the game winning goals against Florida State, against Clemson here at Wake Med Soccer Park that ended 1-0. And then also the game-winning goal in that 2-1 win at Virginia. And then in their in the Carolina's last home game here at Wake Med Soccer Park at the end of September, as we have a goal kick. Tar Heels dismantling the Syracuse Orange 7-0. Joanna Boyles was the star getting that hat trick first hat trick since crystal dunn did it in 2013. and then russo has done exceptionally well for carolina in terms of taking the role of scoring the goals and here is russo on the ball russo marking against price trying to slip it through flag is up off sides so play will continue as that was a good idea trying to slip it towards Aliyah Hyatt. Russo leads the team in goals with eight on the season. Carolina quickly back on the attack with Rade. And a foul on Hyatt as she did battle with Ariana Ferraro. Full back and it'll be a free kick here in the 14th minute. The Cardinals, as we said, with nine wins on the season there. Best record so far since they moved from the American Athletic Conference in, 2013, in uh, 2013 to the ACC. 
Last year, they only picked up seven victories as Vincent tried to chip it over towards Whitfield and Leshnack came out on our line. And a good out towards Buckingham. Coach Dorn's looking for the foul on Russo. Not called from our referee, Dimitar Chavdorov. As a couple changes will come in for Carolina. And it looks like Dorian Bailey, the junior midfielder out of Mission, Kansas, is coming in for her first bit of action. And also, number 23, Lata Wubin Moy, the freshman out of London, England. And she will go into defense, and Taylor Otto will go from defending to being the striker. Lots of Wubin Moy back on the field. She played in the game against Virginia Tech. She's been she had been out with an injury since the uh, Duke Nike Classic. And it's great to have her back on. As here is Otto trying to find Bailey. Good block though on that pass from Gabby Vincent. And now here's Rouse, brought down by Goff. And play will continue. But uh, Lawton Wubin Moy, number 23, who's on the ball for Caroline. She played on England's under 19 team and also played with the Arsenal, plays for Arsenal Ladies Club. Same team that uh, Heather O'Reilly played in this past year. So that's a great header by Andrew Jeske. Bailey with a quick shot. And a good save by Cruzellos. First good chance for Carolina here in the 16th minute. Great crowd has come out here to watch this game. And as in the next few hours, as we said at the top of the broadcast, this game was bumped up to 10 a.m. because uh, U.S. Soccer announced that the women's national team will be playing their second of two friendlies against South Korea. Would be here at Wake Med Soccer Park and obviously with the U.S. women's national team, the defending women's World Cup champions, expecting a great crowd, a sellout. And that game will be at 2 o'clock Eastern on our ESPN networks. Throw for the Tar Heels over on the far, right in front of the Carolinas bench. And Otto chesting it down. Finds Boyles in the center. Boyles, quick shot. Shot always rising, but. Caroline's either looking to Get a quick shot on the first touch or try to create space so that one striker can slip through the back four for the Cardinals. Russo with the header. Buckingham back to the Englishwoman Russo. Ashley. Good bit of dribbling from the sophomore as her pass was blocked. This is one of seven games taking place today in the ACC. Obviously the other games include Miami hosting Notre Dame. The Syracuse Orange hosts the Duke Blue Devils. As Boyles finds Bailey open in the center. Good bit of one-touch passing as Bailey finds Russo, and it's just wide of the post. It looked like Kuzelos had it covered, but she definitely needed to be on alert as that shot was from about 25 yards out. The Clemson Tigers will host the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. 
Florida State Seminoles, the defending ACC tournament champions, host the Pitt Panthers. The Boston College Eagles will host the Virginia Cavaliers, and Virginia Tech Hokies will host NC State today. And as we said, the positioning for the ACC tournament, top eight teams will play on Sunday with the regular season finale on Thursday. There's a good cross in the box. Shot from Ekic is blocked. And it's out by Ruben Moy. Only as far as Price and Louisville couldn't keep their attack going as Brooklyn Rivers provided that cross right in front of the penalty spot. As we said earlier, Carolina and Duke tied atop the ACC standings with 24 points, but it's tightly bunched in between spots three through seven with the difference being three points. Currently, Virginia is in third place at 15 points, four wins and three draws. Wake Forest is in, is in fourth with four wins and two draws. Notre Dame and NC State are tied at 13 points apiece with, apiece with four wins and a draw, and currently in seventh with only with four wins and four losses, the Florida State Seminoles. As Boyles could not find Russo there. Throw for the Cardinals at midfield here in the 21st minute. And a foul by the Cardinals attacker, Rouse. And a quick restart. Tariel's not afraid to put pressure on the back line and then off those headers, try to win the second ball is too heavy a pa of a pass from Goff to Andrew Jeske. That diamond formation working very well in the midfield as Andrew Jeske tracks back towards Rivers, who finds Ekic. Ekic now into space. High cross, and it was, falls out of play. Came off the part of the foot where he trying to put a pass into the box and skies over the goal. And again, a bit of miscommunication between Bailey and Andrew Jeske. After that goal is, before that goal is draw to the Demon Deacons, the Cardinals had a good bit of fortune. They defeated the Pitt Panthers three to nothing. And we're in a tight battle, but unfortunately lost to Virginia in Charlottesville at overtime. There's a shot and a save by Leshnack, shot from Allison Whitfield. Sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky, another local product as the Carolina bench tries to get the fans more active as that's not the best out kick from Leshnack. Fell right to Rouse and Goff wins the battle and now it's going to be a free kick. I'm surprised that the initial challenge between Goff and Rouse wasn't whistled. But our referee, Dimitar Chavdorov, allowing a bit of physical play as the Cardinals have a set piece. Bunch of Cardinal players right on the edge of the penalty box. Good header by Russo. But it falls to Rouse. Russo with another block. And now Vincent has to track back against Taylor Otto. And now Otto finds Russo. Bailey is forward. The ball was behind her. And Kuzelos 
Gets it out of harm's way. Header won by Boyles. Russo runs into a sea of red and is brought down for a free kick here in the 24th minute. Joanna Boyles will stand on top of this. Good ball in as it took a bounce. Ashley and Alinsky were in the path of its trajectory. Kuzelis reacted well. So far, four shots for the Tar Heels, three for the Cardinals. As we are past the midway point of the first half, so that was not the best outkick from Kuzelis. Redshirt freshman out of Wadsworth, Ohio. So far in her 16 plus games. Gazelis has made 45 saves and has a goals against average of just over one. And she has been the starter and she gets it, hits the ball out of play. Obviously this will be the last stretch of game this weekend before the release of the new uh, United Soccer Coaches poll. Poll released every week on Tuesday. Good passing from the Tar Heels, but Bailey couldn't control it. Currently the top two teams in the country are on from the West Coast in the Pac-12, the Stanford Cardinal and the UCLA Bruins are one and two. South Carolina out of the SEC is currently third in the country, and then it's the two ACC squads, Duke and North Carolina at four and five. The top five has been the same for the past several weeks. The defending national champion USC Trojans are currently sixth in the country. And one of the teams that has actually beaten the Tar Heels this year, the uh, Central Florida at 9-1-1 one, one is seventh in the country. West Virginia, the team that beat the Tar Heels in the College Cup last year is currently eighth. Penn State is ninth. And the Texas Longhorns are 10th as Vincent sends a ball in. And it was off the head of Goff. And it's going to be a corner kick. First corner for Louisville here in the 28th minute. Thank you again for watching on ACC Network Extra. I'm Brian Ware as Amina Ekic and Brooklyn Rivers. Four players in the box as Ekic plays it out to Vincent. And Vincent's attempt is wide of the far post. Looked like that was a decent set play. Linsky did battle to win that header. And the forwarding pass by Boyles is collected up by Kuzelos. Several of the Carolina players represented the U.S. in the under 20 Women's World Cup last season. 
including uh, number six, Taylor Otto, as well as Jesse Scarpa. And that's a quick reaction from Carolina. Kuzelis, right at the corner of her box, hits it out. She said Jesse Scarpa represented the U.S. as well as Emily Fox. Here's Rivers for the Cardinals. Rivers towards the edge of the area, marked by Andrew Jeske. Rivers tracks back, looking for help. Good bit of individual play from Brooklyn, Brooklyn Rivers, the sophomore out of Fort Thomas, Kentucky. And the Cardinals have earned their second corner kick. She started every game last year. Rivers led the team in goals and points with four goals on the season. This time Rouse with the corner kick, headed out by Alinsky. It falls to Rivers. And that's not a bad attempt from the sophomore, Brooklyn Rivers. And now Carolina will make a couple changes as it looks like Madison Schultz and Sydney Spruill will come in for Alicia Russo and Joanna Boyles here in the 31st minute. Bit of a positional change. Alinsky now playing the holding midfield role as Goff has gone to the back three as Sproul couldn't keep that ball in play. Throw by Nelson, one by Goff. And now here's Dorian Bailey over to Alinsky. Andrew Jeske, the ACC Freshman of the year last season. Still trying to pursue the ball. Good challenge by Bailey. Quick pass by Buckingham looking for Otto. Otto trying to sprint with Vincent. Got a touch and it was blocked by Gabby Vincent. It's a corner kick to the Tar Heels here in the 32nd minute. Much to the applause of the Tar Heel fans who have come to Cary, North Carolina here at Kokobooth Stadium. The second stadium here at Wake Med Soccer Park. The major stadium which, which the U.S. Women's National Team is behind our camera and broadcast position as Bailey will deliver this corner kick. It's into the box, punched out by Kuzelos up in the air. Ball still fought for. So a couple players went down. Ashley finds Otto. It's cleared off the line by Rouse. And it's another corner kick. Great persistence from the Tar Heels, especially after Kuzelos did well to punch that ball out. It only went, it went high up in the air. And Ashley ended out with the ball. And the last shot from Taylor Otto was cleared off the line as Bailey Lee moves over to the far corner towards the near post. Buckingham blocked by a sea of red players. Sproul shot is blocked. Buckingham finds Schultz. That cross is blocked and it's another corner kick. Tar Heel fans feel a goal is in the near future but the Cardinals Really packing it in in front of that six yard area. Bailey's corner kick now comes out. Alinsky headed it down. Ball still fought for and it's again cleared off the line. That time by Maddie Rout, Molly Rouse. Second time she's done that in the past few minutes. Another cross in. And the Cardinals defense gets rid of it. Wubin Moy with another effort in, headed out by Vincent. And good awareness by Rouse. As now the Cardinals try to get out on a counterattack, though they need more support after 
The Cardinals defense did an excellent job preventing all those shots and chances by the Tar Heels. And they've earned themselves a throw right in front of their bench. Nelson, Price, here's Neve Nelson again. And it's out of play by Carolina. 35th minute, still scoreless after those three set piece chances by the Tar Heels. Yielded a good number of chances, but nothing for it. As Vincent with the left footed try met by Leshnack, kept the ball in play. And now the Tar Heels look to put more pressure on this Louisville defense as the Cardinals will look to make a couple of changes. And it appears, I believe Jesse Scarpa is going to check in. And with the ball hit out of play, changes will be made. And it is number 12, Jesse Scarpa for North Carolina. She made her return for the Tar Heels in the game against Boston College. She had been out of the lineup since the weekend that Carolina traveled to Florida as Spruill wins the ball. Scarpa calling for it. Good pass to Scarpa and her first touch got away from her. And Kuzelos can bottle it up. But Scarpa is so dangerous. So we said she was a part of the uh, under 20 Women's World Cup team. Took the year off. And now the red shirt junior. Trying to do what she did, which was so well in 2015. Which is be one of the star attackers. Obviously Scarpa working her way back into the lineup. It's now her third game back. Here's Ashley, who finds Scarpa. Good turn against Vincent. Though it's a solid challenge by the midfielder McKinney. And Kuzelis with a bit of flair trying to avoid Spruill. And she finds Rouse. Nelson. Nelson trying to slip it towards Ekic, but it's good awareness from Bailey. Ruben Moy to Ashley. We'll just pass it back to her keeper and reset. 38th minute. Still North Carolina nil. Louisville nil. Seven shots for the Tar Heels. Three on target compared to Louisville's five shots and one on target as referee Dimitar Chavdarov whistles a foul on the Tar Heels and it will allow the Cardinals to breathe a little bit. Substitutions were made as number two, Morgan Dewey and number 22, Kayla Dickerman have come in for the Cardinals for and the free kick trying to go over the top is settled by Leshnack. Ball slips by everyone. Kuzelis really comes off her line and does well as Schultz was in pursuit. Now Price. Price evades a challenge. Finds Dickerman. Ball evades Ashley and it was towards the path of Dewey. And Andrzejewski 
Gets the ball forward, headed out by Bierke. And Scarpa was looking for the quick throw, but will lay it off for Ashley and Andrew Jeske. Scarpa finds Sproul. Now here's Dickerman. Dickerman to Ekic. Back to McKinney. Intercepted. And now Scarpa trying to go slip it through. That lofted pass picked off by Louisville. And now Ekic. Dickerman on side. Getting over towards the far corner. Good cross in. Rouse. Not the best attempt. Bailey, good challenge by Vincent against Scarpa. And again, a second challenge by Gabby Vincent. This is only the second all-time meeting between North Carolina and Louisville. First time happened two years ago in Kentucky when the Cardinals pulled off the Biggest win in the school's history when they defeated Carolina, who was at the time the number one team in the country by the score of two to one in overtime. And Gabby Vincent had one of the goals. She scored the equalizer in the second half of that match. As the flag is up, as Scarpa was the target. That 2-1 loss to the Cardinals in 2015 was the last time that Carolina had a lead and then eventually lost the match. Forty second minute. Cardinals make a change as TJ Anderson, number 27, comes in for Molly Rouse. Anderson, a freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. She was the Georgia 2A State Player of the Year. Heavy touch by Star Scarpa, picked off by Bierke. Now here's Ferraro. Trying to find Dickerman. It'll be a throw in front of the Louisville bench for the Cardinals. Forty-second minute. Just about a few minutes until the halftime break. As the best chances have come from the Tar Heels. In that two minute spell, they had three corner kicks. Good chances that were blocked by multiple Louisville defenders as Alinsky's pass is picked off by Nelson and now Dickerman. Dickerman trying to find Anderson. Goff tracks back. And Anderson picks Goff's pocket. Into the center is Ekic. And Andrew Jeske gets it out of harm's way only as far as Dickerman. Carolina just a little shaky. Losing the ball in such a bad position as Scarpa was brought down on the pass. And the ball will be taken back at the spot of the foul. Bierke wins the header. Ekic. Dickerman went down. That was a bit of a shoulder to shoulder challenge with Bailey. Now Buckingham. Three red shirts in front of her. She passes to the middle. And Olinsky. Andrew Jeske. 
the other wing back. Over to Ashley, good one, two. Ferraro couldn't keep it in play. It's a throw to the Tar Heels. Just a little over a minute remaining in this first half. Quick throw. Vincent clears it. Ashley with the challenge. And now Olinsky will pass it back to Wubin Moy. 45th minute. Bailey towards Andrew Jeske and it's too far in front. Louisville head coach Karen Ferguson Days, all time winningest head coach at Louisville, 157 victories. She was the 2011 Big East Coach of the Year when Louisville was a part of the Big East before all the major conference shifts with the Power Five and the other conferences as Scarpa's cross, deflected by Vincent. And it's just out by Dickerman. 10 seconds left as Ashley comes forward. Quick throw to Scarpa. And Scarpa couldn't control it. And that will be the first half here at Coca Booth Stadium. A good show from the North Carolina Tar Heels. They put up seven shots, three on target. Though from the 31st to the 33rd minute, Carolina had their best opportunities. They had three corner kicks consecutively, and several Tar Heel players, including Taylor Otto and Sidney Sproul, had chances to get the opening goal, but the Louisville defense, both Cuzelos and the outfield players of the Cardinals, have done well to keep this knotted up at zero apiece. We'll be back in about 15 minutes with the second half. You're watching ACC Women's Soccer here on ACC Network Extra.
We welcome you back here to Coca Booth Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park as we get ready for the second half between the fifth ranked North Carolina Tar Heels and the Louisville Cardinals here in, on ACC Network Extra. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cary, North Carolina. I'm Brian Ware, and it is goalless after the first 45 minutes, though Carolina had a good number of chances to get the opening goal in the first half. There was a good spell in the 32nd minute where Carolina had three successive corner kicks and the Louisville goalkeeper, Gabrielle Cuzelos, and the Louisville players made key saves, key blocks, and key defensive work on the back line as head coach Anson Dorrance brings out a different starting 11 to start this second half. And quickly, Andrew Jeske, who played all 45 minutes with the cross in, cleared out by Louisville. You have uh, Sydney Spruill, Alicia Russo, In attack, you also have Joanna Boyles, Dorian Bailey, along with Goff, Otto, and Alinsky, as well as Ashley, the outfield players. As Alinsky's pass is picked off by Neve Nelson, number eight. Quick pass towards Allison Whitfield, number 23, and for the Cardinals is Leshnack gets it out. Good header by McKinney against Boyles. TJ Anderson, a reserve, found Amina Ekic, whose shot is high and wide for a goal kick. Seven Tar Heel players each had a shot in, their, in the first half. And for the Cardinals, five different players with a shot in the opening 45. Conference positions still being battled for over these next two conference games. Co regular season ending on Thursday as currently North Carolina 8-0 in ACC play. Battling out, they've already qualified for the ACC tournament. They're just battling it out with Duke for the regular season championship. Louisville currently with 10 points in conference play, is currently tied for eighth and hoping to fight for that last playoff spot. With the way the tournament is set up, the quarterfinals, the top four seeds will host so Carolina will host a game here at Wake Med Soccer Park. There's a good ball from Buckingham towards Spruill. Spruill in the box and her touch towards the byline. Unable to control and it will fall for a goal kick. But the top four seeds in the ACC would host and then the semifinals and the championship would take place in Charleston, South Carolina, which was where the uh, championship was held last year. Carolina made it to the final, where they lost in a penalty shootout to Florida State, who won the ACC tournament for the fourth year in a row. And now a free kick for Joanna Boyles and the Tar Heels here in the 49th minute. Boyles lofts the ball into the box. Fought it for, Alinsky looked like she had a head on it. Russo, her chance is blocked. Out wide to Andrew Jeske. Andrew Jeske forced it back by Ferraro, who finds Ashley. Headed out, and the Louisville defense does its job defending that set piece by the senior Norwegian defender, Inger Bjerke.
Allison Price also on the back line. Nelson evades the challenge from Russo, and they find Amina Ekic. Ekic with a bit of speed. Ekic trying to find Brooklyn Rivers. Second ball won by Anderson, and now Rivers trying to chase off Andrew Jeske. Over towards the far corner, Rivers gets around the sophomore, Andrew Jeske. Ferraro into the box, and Olinsky heads it to Boyles, and Carolina can push forward, though. They need support as Sproul sees a sea of red in front of her. Good bit of speed from Sproul, the freshman. Over towards her teammate, Russo, good header. Ball won by Buckingham. Russo's chance is blocked by Bierke. Bailey, Sproul. Bailey against McKinney. And Brooklyn Rivers tracked back to Mark Andrzejewski. Good chance there for the Tar Heels. As Vincent and Sproul collided, Bjerke gets it out of harm's way. And it'll be a throw at midfield. Said the last time Carolina was won the regular season championship in the ACC was in 2014. They actually shared that championship with Florida State as Alicia Russo was brought down, not called by our referee Dimitar Chavdorov as Amina Ekic trying to split Carolina defenders. She goes down, waved no by Chavdorov. Play continues. As we said in the first half, Chavdorov letting the teams be a bit physical. And Vincent does her job stopping the attack from Ashley for just a moment. Not the best throw in, and Anson Dorrance furious at that poor throw in from Ashley. And now Carolina has to restart their attack. But in 2014, Carolina shared the ACC regular season championship with the Seminoles. The last time they won the ACC outright and was perfect, 10 for 10, was in 2008, which is Potentially a feat the Tar Heels can accomplish if they are able to defeat Louisville. And then on Thursday, Carolina will host on Senior Day the Notre Dame Fighting Irish as Buckingham was brought down by Nelson. North Carolina has won 21 ACC regular season championships and 20 ACC tournament championships as well as the 21 NCAA National Championships under the 39 years of Anson Dorrance. Anson Dorrance with 821 victories. A feat that will likely never be equaled as Anderson gets it out wide to Whitfield. One on one with Alinsky. Now Ashley comes in support. Whitfield evades both of them, finds Rivers. And a good block by Taylor Otto right at the near post as Rivers was on target. Good individual flair from number 23, Allison Whitfield, who was able to find Brooklyn Rivers as Rivers cut across into the box. And Taylor Otto tracked her all the way and blocked it at the near post. And now the Cardinals have a corner kick. And it looks like it's going to be Amina Ekic, the freshman from Louisville, Kentucky, who has a good chance to be on the ACC all-freshman team. That corner kick over the head of Whitfield. And now the Cardinals will make a substitution change. Actually, when the Cardinals get the next dead ball, it looks like 
It's going to be Molly Rouse, who will who was excellent defensively on those corner kicks, helping clear balls off the line and keeping this a uh, scoreless game. Actually, Rouse is on the field. It's out of play and a goal kick. 55th minute here at Coca Booth Stadium. And it looks like number 13, Brooklyn Rivers, will come out for number two, Morgan Dewey. Louisville challenging this Carolina squad with five at the back as Buckingham nutmegs Nelson, finding Alicia Russo. Russo, her shot was deflected by Price. And the ball is out of play. As we said, Alicia Russo is named the ACC Player of the Week and was actually named the United Soccer Coaches National Player of the Week two weeks ago. She had three goals in two games, scoring the game winner against Miami in the second half, and then both goals against Wake Forest in Winston-Salem as Buckingham's cross was cleared out by the Louisville defense. Ashley trying to recover from her mistake, but now the ball will fall to Allison Whitfield, who had a good pass just a moment ago. Finds Ekic in space on the far side. Rouse is in the box. Cross was blocked by Goff. And the Tar Heels can't keep the ball in play, so it's another corner kick. Fourth corner kick for the Cardinals. So far, nine shots. Both teams with two shots apiece in this second half. And not the best corner kick from the freshman, Molly Rouse. Yields the goal kick. Rouse from Warwickshire, Warwickshire England has been part of the Aston Villa Ladies Academy. And a couple years ago, as part of the Aston Villa clubs, uh, the women's side finished runners up in the FA Youth Cup in 2015. <laughs> Rouse had scored back to back goals earlier games and back to back games earlier this season against both Purdue and Gardner Webb. But as there's a big collision between Alinsky, she came over the top of Allison Whitfield. Yields a free kick and obviously referee Dimitar Chavdorov checking on the safety of Allison Whitfield. And it will give the Cardinals a set piece. As we haven't seen many hard fouls so far this match. Neve Nelson will deliver the ball into the box. Leshnack comes out. Ball's not cleared. And a chance from Dewey is blocked, believed by Andrew Jeske. Vincent Bierke. And Louisville is trying to get back on side, and it'll be a goal kick here in the 59th minute. Still scoreless as the Cardinals have shown their ability to play well against the best, better teams in the ACC. Right. 
even though they've lost some of those tough matches. They lost at home to Florida State by two goals to one. They lost at home to Duke by three goals to two. And then they had that tough loss in Charlottesville, giving up a goal in the 99th minute. First period of extra time as Russo finds Buckingham. Quick cross into the box. Dealt with by McKinney and Whitfield as a slew of Carolina players are ready to come in, but they'll have to wait as the Cardinals have earned themselves a throw. Looks like Scarpa, you have Hyatt, you have Rade, and uh, Lata Wubin Moy. And now those subs will take place now. As it looks like Dorian Bailey, Alicia Russo, Sydney Sproul, and Morgan Goff will make way and head over to the bench here in the 60th minute. We've passed the hour mark here and it's now good afternoon. <laughs> As this game here between North Carolina and Louisville was bumped up to a 10 a.m. start with the U.S. women's national team taking on South Korea in an international friendly in a couple of hours. The women's national team won the first friendly down in New Orleans against South Korea at the Superdome by the score of three to one as Scarpa picks the ball clean. Quick pass towards Hyatt. And Price gets it out only as far as Alinsky. And Scarpa couldn't control it. With the women's game having an international break. There's also a lot of uh, news happening in terms of the international game as tomorrow in London will be the uh, FIFA will give out their awards for men's, women, and women's player of the year. Also, the, uh, the Pushkas Award for the goal of the year. And a local ACC, pro, uh, an ACC player uh, in the women's game has been nominated for both, the Ace, for, for both the FIFA women's player of the year and goal of the year. And that is Florida State attacker Dana Castellanos. The striker out of Venezuela last year competed in the under-17 uh, Women's World Cup in Jordan. And she was excellent for Venezuela as the Cardinals have a corner kick. And Molly Rouse... Oh, it curled on. Did it go in? And more and Julia Ashley stumbled a little bit. The ball went over the keeper and right towards the line. Linesman did not say the ball crossed it. But Julia Ashley says she's okay. What an opportunity, though, for the Cardinals. As the Tar Heels get a throw, Castellanos of Florida State. Scored several goals. She scored five goals in the under-17 Women's World Cup, and one of those was an incredible winner in their group stage match against Cameroon. After Cameroon equalized one-to-one, -one, Castellanos off the kickoff scored from midfield to win the match for Venezuela. So Castellanos 
nominated, that goal was nominated for the goal of the year. Also nominated was uh, Olivier Giroud's scorpion kick goal. Olivier Giroud, part of Arsenal, as, she, as he scored that goal against Crystal Palace on New Year's Day. And the third goal coming from Oscarine Masuleke, the goalkeeper from South Africa in the South African Premier League. He scored a bicycle kick goal at the end of the match to win it for his club the Orlando Pirates. Uh, Castellanos also nominated for the FIFA Women's Player of the Year as Scarpa's Cross. Yields a goal kick. Castellanos nominated along with Women's World Cup champion Carly Lloyd, who is in a good position to potentially repeat as FIFA Women's Player of the Year and also uh, Lieke Martins, the Netherlands player who plays on Barcelona, who is the golden ball winner in the this summer's European Championships that Holland hosted and won as the Cardinals get a free kick, much to the chagrin of the Tar Heel fans here. Sixty fifth minute, and still neither side has had a chance to score the breakthrough as both teams have had three shots in this second half. North Carolina now with ten on the match, Louisville with eight as Wuben Moy does battle with Ekic. Now Rouse. Trying it herself from about 30 yards out. Yields the goal kick. And now Anson Dorrance will give a, a break for Joanna Boyles as Dorian Bailey comes back in. Bailey, as we mentioned, was named the ACC Player of the Week at the beginning of the ACC regular season. She helped push this Carolina team into the squad that it is today, scoring game-winning goals in three consecutive games against Florida State, Clemson, and Virginia as Ashley has to track all the way back. And Leshnack hits it out of play in front of the Carolina bench. Carolina also a good position right now in terms of their RPI. Three ACC squads in the top 10 in RPI. Carolina at number two, just behind South Carolina. So the two Carolina schools are one and two in RPI as both Carolina schools are also in the top five in the coaches poll. We've reached the midway point here in the second half. It is still North Carolina nil, Louisville nil. Here on ACC Network Extra, I'm Brian Ware. Thanks again for joining us as the Cardinals have really done well going up against Carolina tit for tat in terms of their position in all three phases, from defending to trying to win the ball in the midfield to sparking some quick attacks. 
And Carolina just hasn't had that pristine golden opportunity to get the breakthrough. Ashley, Rade. She evades McKinney, finds Bailey. Bailey avoid, avoids two red shirts. Bailey out wide to Andrew Jeske. Quick cross into the box, headed out by Price. Scarpa wins the ball. And Scarpa will track back to Ashley. Ashley's cross met by Rade, and it'll be a goal kick. And now Brooklyn Rivers will come back in for Morgan Dewey. Rivers had that great chance in the second half. After Allison Whitfield found Rivers, the shot was blocked. The shot was blocked by Taylor Otto. Free kick to the Cardinals. Three Cardinal players bunched together. Nelson with different options. She gets it out wide to Gabby Vincent. Though good defending by Scarpa as Rouse has to come back to try to win it. And the English woman does well. Vincent, just over the head of Ekich. And now space to run for Taylor Otto. Otto coming forward, finds Hyatt out wide to Scarpa, who's onside. Though Bierke blocks the cross. And now Rivers trying to find a teammate. Rouse is forward, and Ekich is wide open in space. No mid defender coming out as the defense is tracking back. Ekic gonna take it herself. And wastes a good chance from 28 yards out as Scarpa will come out for Madison Schultz. And Molly Rouse will come out for TJ Anderson here in the 72nd minute. North Carolina and Louisville both with 10 shots. As that error from Leshnack putting a level of concern on Anson Dorrance's face as they've been trying to break down this Louisville side, but the back line and McKinney, the holding midfielder, they've done really well marking these Carolina attackers as Ferraro try to link up with Rivers. Bit of miscommunication. Good challenge by Vincent against Rade. Loose ball. And Alinsky comes out with it. Out wide to the wing back, Buckingham. Buckingham tried to push it for Hyatt, though Price did her job. Looks like the starters, players that started for Carolina at the beginning of this second half are ready to return. Looking at Sydney Spruill, Joanna Boyles, Alicia Russo, and Otto misplayed it. Throw to the Cardinals. Bit of nerves here at Kokobu Stadium as Carolina has failed to try to break this Cardinals team down. Whitfield. Nelson, Bierke with Hyatt giving chase. Vincent, good patience by the Cardinals. Over to Ekic, 
That gets marked by Wubin Moy. The play is allowed to continue as we said, Dimitar Chavdorov, our referee, has allowed some the physical play to take place in this match. As Ferraro is marked by Bailey and Andrew Jeski. And now she tracks back, keeps the ball in on the far side to her center back, Bierke. McKinney in space is Rivers, who's on side. Rivers coming through. It's three on three. Rivers now coming in towards the middle. Brooklyn Rivers is shot. Blocked. Anderson's off the post. The best chance we've seen all day coming from TJ Anderson for the Cardinals. Carolina had those chances in the second, in the first half, but the Louisville defense did its job. And now the Cardinals are getting into a rhythm as the Tar Heel fans here are trying to push Carolina over the finish line, especially. in these 90 minutes. But what a chance from TJ Anderson in the 74th minute. Those pockets of space between the midfielders and the three center backs who are narrow are open for the wingers of Louisville. Here's Andrew Jeske, Schultz, Shot blocked by McKinney. Ashley wins the ball. Andrew Jeske again. Rade is in space. Rade comes back for it. And it'll be a goal kick as the starters will come back in for Carolina. Russo, Sproul, Goff, and Boyles in for Rade, Hyatt. Olinsky and Schultz. And coming in for the first time here in the 76th minute is a freshman from Quebec, Canada, Nadej L'Esperance, who's on the ball, number three for Louisville. L'Esperance played for Canada in the under 17 Women's World Cup last year in Jordan, the same World Cup that Dana Castellanos of Florida State competed in. Canada, unfortunately, did not make it out of the group stage as the Tar Heels have a free kick at midfield. And Boyles will send a long ball into the box. And what a chance for Goff as the linesman initially waved a goal kick, but the referee, Dimitar Chavdorov, overruled and has given the Tar Heels a corner kick. The fifth corner kick for Carolina and first of this second half. As Boyles found Goff in the box from about 10 yards out. And now you got Goff and Bailey right on the goal line inside the six yard box. Ashley and Otto will look to run in as well as Andrew Jeske. Otto comes back to the penalty spot, it's over her head. Though it goes all the way back to Buckingham. Right footed cross, Cruzellas came out and so did Goff. And it's a goal kick as Cruzellos and Goff collided trying to Get that ball from Buckingham. And the clock is stopped here in the 78th minute. As Gabby Cazellos, the redshirt freshman out of Wadsworth, Ohio. Trying to shake off that knock on her left thigh. Cruzellos is a member of the U.S. under 18 and national team. She participated in the camp for the U-20 national team, a team that Jesse Scarpa and Taylor Otto were a part of when they, the under 20 women's national team went to Papua New Guinea for the World Cup.
Boyles, Buckingham, finds Sproul in space, but the flag is up, offsides. Probably just a fraction off by Sidney Sproul, the freshman out of Greenville, North Carolina, went to Rose High School, not far from ECU. Buckingham, Bailey, marked by Nelson. Bailey evades the pressure of all those red shirts and gets it back to Wubin Moy. Ashley. Wubin Moy, the English woman, plays for Arsenal Ladies Club as Goff hits it out of play. Anderson try to get it forward for a teammate. Her shot, best chance for Louisville in the 74th minute. Carolina has had five chances in this second half, though none on target as the Louisville defenders have done their job protecting Kuzelos and the net and her net. Here's McKinney for Louisville. Trying to slip it for Brooklyn Rivers. Ashley finds Andrew Jeski. Actually, a Russo forward pass towards Boyles. And it's going to be a goal kick. Good defending in terms of boxing out by Inger Bierke. 80th minute. No scores made in the 90 minutes. There will be go to extra time, two 10 minute periods, golden goal. Header won by Goff. Boyles lobbed it up into space and Alicia Russo beats Ferraro. Russo's cross, Sproul was towards the center. And Kayla Dickerman, sub for the Cardinals, just hits it out of play. Bailey, Otto. Into the center is Boyles. Pass blocked by Rivers, though it goes forward for the Tar Heels. Bailey, crossing it in. Good chance for Otto, though. Bierke did her job, and the Cardinals get it clear. Again, Cardinals playing with that back five with Nelson and Ferraro playing as fullbacks and the three center backs challenging the Tar Heel attackers as the cross in claimed by Cruzellos against Dorian Bailey. Cardinals looking to make three substitutions as looks like Cruzellos' shoe has come undone. Looks like uh, Molly Rouse, Amina Ekic, who came out just a moment ago, and Allison Whitfield ready to come in as Bailey evades McKinney. Bailey, marked by Bierke, finds Russo. Good tackle by Ferraro, number six. The sophomore out of New Jersey. Quick throw by Ashley. Russo, good ball into the box, though it's too high for Sproul. And now substitutions for the Cardinals as Anderson, L'Esperance, and Dickerman all come out for Whitfield, Rouse, and Amina Ekic here in the 83rd minute. North Carolina nil, Louisville nil. 12 shots for the Tar Heels, though no shots on target. 
in this first half. Cardinals with six shots in the second half. One of those shots hitting the post. Well, that shot does is not considered a shot on target. And it looks like the clock needs to be reset. The clock is, was stopped with 7.23. So that is why we have the pause here as referee Dimitar Chabdorov talking with his fourth official, Justin Finger. And now the clock is reset. 8.14 remaining here in this second half. So you're still in the 82nd minute. And both teams with their best 11 out to try to get a winner late as Whitfield and Otto try to do battle. And it's won by the redshirt freshman Otto who finds Buckingham on the near side. Sproul, Boyles. Boyles couldn't control it and she brings down Ekic. And Ekic is down in a world of hurt. And quickly, the trainers are coming out to address Amina Ekic, and it does not look good. Boyles trying to comfort. It was just a free collision, and it looks like this is going to be an injury that is going to take some time as both teams have run over to their respective benches. As you see head coach Karen Ferguson Days talking with her young freshman and local product Amina Ekic, the freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky who has been such a delight for Ferguson Days, leads the team with seven goals on the season and she is holding on to her left knee as they are slowly trying to stretch it out. Also, the Carolina trainers have come out to support. Ekic from Kentucky. The, she was in high school at DuPont Manual High School. She was a two-time Gatorade State Player of the Year. She was an NSCAA All-American and a three-time first-team All-State performer. She's also been a member of the U.S. Under-17 and Under-19 national teams in Ekic is now standing up, and this could be a worse for wear. As a good round of applause from the fans here. Good, good number of Louisville fans have come out here to carry, as well as the Tar Heel fans applauding. But she is going to be slowly, and now they're going to lift her up and bring her back. And this is, you need to think it's probably either going to be an ACL injury or potentially worse, an Achilles injury as Joanna Boyles offered her support. It was Eckett, the collision of number 10s that yielded the foul and unfortunately Louisville's star freshman with her prowess of scoring goals will be out of, out for the remainder of this match and possibly the remainder of the season. As Morgan Dewey, number two for Louisville, will come in for Ekic. But Ekic, with the way that she's played this year, I would not be surprised if she's named to the ACC all-freshman team with the way she's performed in her six first 16 games for the Cardinals. Now the play has to continue for Louisville as 
Rouse just had a touch there and just missed out on it. Ruben Moy, Buckingham to Bailey. Now Otto here in the 84th minute after the clock was stopped due to the Ekic injury. Sproul flag us up off sides. Sproul just again a fraction off. And will yield the free kick. Rivers on the second ball. Rouse towards the edge of the box. It falls to Dewey. Trying to link up with Ferraro, but Ferraro was behind. And now Russo and Ferraro doing battle. Good tackle by Vincent. Gabby Vincent now into the midfield. Looking for Rouse, headed by Wubin Moy. Andrew Jeski, good defending by Bierke as Bailey tracks back to Buckingham. Buckingham now into the middle, finds Boyles. Sproul still forward as Russo now in support. Boyles goes out wide to Andrew Jeski. And the pass just in front of Russo and Ferraro does her job. And now Ferraro tries to find Molly Rouse. And Leshnack will come out. She was already out of her box. Keeps things going for the Tar Heels. And Carolina has a throw as Jesse Scarpa will come in for Sydney Sproul. Potentially to look for a late winner. Scarpa had a great goal uh, beating the offsides trap two years ago against Clemson. And in the first game this season in the Carolina Nike Ca Classic against the Duke Blue Devils, it was Jesse Scarpa's goal in the 94th minute. First period of extra time that gave the Tar Heels the win over the Blue Devils. McKinney, Rivers has now moved into the middle of the pitch where Ekic usually plays. And good defending by Otto. Scarpa keeps it alive. Boyles. Russo. Good centering pass to Bailey. Trying to evade several defenders. Bailey trying to keep it alive, though. Price and Bierke do their job. McKinney just hits it out. Cross into the box, and it looked like it was a shot by Alicia Russo and Kuzelos had to mark that top corner. 87th minute. Here at Kokobooth Stadium, the second stadium here at Wake Med Soccer Park. As Ashley and the Tar Heels get a throw on right in front of the bench. Ruben Moy. Towards Scarpa. Scarpa looking for help though. Pass it back to Ashley. And now Price to Whitfield. Boyle's trying to give chase. Whitfield will pass it back to Nelson. Nelson into midfield to McKinney. Good patience from Louisville. The Whitfield's commitment allows Otto to press forward. Buckingham's on the wing. Nelson comes in front. On that pass, Otto now to Ashley, who's tracked forward. McKinney clears it into space for Brooklyn Rivers on this near side. It's three on three as Rivers cuts through Boyles and Wubin Moy. Rivers' chance came off target. Though McKinney, chance was blocked, headed by Wubin Moy. And now Bailey on the ball. Over to Buckingham. Trying, both teams trying to get a late winner here as we're in the 88th minute. And Scarpa could not beat 
price to that ball. Ashley Russo, marked by Vincent. Russo slips it through to Scarpa. Cruzellos is out, good block by Cruzellos. Cruzellos was, was out by the penalty spot and she saw the run from Scarpa and got down low to stop Scarpa from getting a late winner. End to end action here at Coca Booth Stadium. Whitfield, Rivers was calling for it. Create space, Rouse. Couldn't control it. Otto. Over to Bailey. Foul and looks like a card may be issued to Allison Price. The first yellow card here in the 89th minute to the, the defender Allison Price. The senior out of Clemens, North Carolina. So give North Carolina a free kick. Tar Heel bench standing up, hoping that Carolina can get another good chance here late. As Scarpa had just a moment ago. Buckingham finds Bailey right on the sideline, marked by Price. Corner kick. Second corner kick of the second half, sixth of the match. As now we are in the 90th minute. Tar Heel fans now making some noise as Joanna Boyles places the ball. You have Bailey and Goff in the six yard box. Scarpa and Otto might track in towards the penalty spot. It's near and it gets by everybody. Russo was the last to touch it as that corner kick traversed just across the six yard box. Just about 10 seconds left. As Price seven, controls six, it, five, McKinney finds Whitfield, two, and it looks like one, extra time is three, in our future as both teams have yet to score after 90 minutes. Though both teams had excellent chances late in this second half. The best chance for Louisville coming from TJ Anderson, whose shot in the 74th minute hit the post. And then just a moment ago, Jesse Scarpa was through. But Gabby Cuzellos, the goalkeeper for Louisville, blocked the shot. And so after 90 minutes, it's the fifth ranked Tar Heels nil, the Cardinals nil. We'll be back in about five minutes with the first of two 10 minute overtime periods. Golden goal will determine the winner here on ACC Network Extra.
90 minutes have passed and neither team has been able to break through and score a goal. It's the fifth ranked North Carolina Tar Heels nil, the Louisville Cardinals nil as we head to the first of two 10 minute extra time periods here on ACC Network Extra. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Coca Booth Stadium here at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. I'm Brian Ware, thanks again for staying with us for what has been a very good match of football between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Louisville Cardinals as we get ready for overtime. Carolina has Leshnack, Ashley, Ruben Moy, Otto, Alinsky, Boyles, Andrew Jeske, Russo, Spruill, Bailey, and Buckingham on the field for the Tar Heels. Louisville has Kuzelos, Nelson, Price, Bierke, Vincent, Ferraro, Whitfield, McKinney, Rivers, Dickerman, and Anderson. Carolina had some good chances in the first half on a series of corner kicks that the Louisville defense did well, both the goalkeeper and outfield players. Those were the best chances in the first half. In the second half, the best chance for Louisville came in the 74th minute after TJ Anderson's shot hit the post. And then a scary injury in the 84th minute as their star, the Cardinals star young talisman, Amina Ekic, went out with a left leg injury and it's possibly a season ending injury. And then when play resumed, Jesse Scarpa had a chance to win it late, though Kuzelos came up big. And that is what has kept this game goalless. Carolina now playing its third overtime game of the season. The first overtime game since they went back to back overtime games at the start of this 2017 campaign. Carolina defeated Duke here two to one and they lost to Central Florida by that same two to one score line. Louisville is playing its fourth overtime game of the season and now back to back games as they drew goalless against Wake Forest on Thursday as Kuzelos gets the ball clear after the pass from Sproul to Alicia Russo. The Cardinals have gotten one draw and lost the other two. Those two losses coming up against ACC opponents in Duke that they lost three to two in double overtime and their last, and uh, also the Virginia Cavaliers, they gave up that goal in the 99th minute at the end of the first overtime session. Buckingham gets the ball into the box as Andrew Jeske was darting towards the far post and Kuzelos claims it. Quick outlet pass to Kayla Dickerman. Taken away by Spruill. Now Russo trying to get Kuzelos off her line, but Kuzelos saw it all the way. Here in the 93rd minute, Cardinals now breathe a small sigh of relief as the Carolina players and fans trying to cheer them on to get a winner. Carolina is 8-0 in ACC play as they get a corner kick. They look to make it 9-0 if they can get a winner here. They are currently tied for first place with the Duke Blue Devils. Again, after beating Duke in the first game of the season, Duke has been on fire, winning 15 in a row and tied atop with Carolina at the top of the ACC standings. Boyles' his corner kick into the box. Kuzelis met it against Russo. Sproul's touch. Shot was blocked. And a foul committed by Carolina and a card will be issued to the freshman Sydney Sproul with her challenge coming up high on the Louisville defender and it looked like it was Allison Price that took the knock. And it was actually Allison Whitfield, number 23. Uh, Gabby Kuzelos has done her job 
Defending that corner kick here in the 94th minute. Conference positioning very important here as Louisville currently tied for eighth in the ACC standings, trying to get that last spot that would put them in the ACC tournament for the first time in the program's history since they moved to the ACC in 2014. Whitfield fights Dickerman, whose shot is high. First chance for the Cardinals here in extra time. A chance that really came out of nothing. Anderson wins the header against Olinsky. Otto on the second ball, Olinsky to Spruill. Marked by Price, back to Olinsky. Otto. Buckingham finds Bailey. She scored three game-winning goals in ACC play this season. She looks to provide another one as Price hits the ball out on the cross. And it's another corner kick for the Tar Heels here in the 95th minute. Eighth corner of the match. As again, looks like Buckingham and Goff and Bailey are in there. As the cross is in, it careens by the entire face of goal. And just like Louisville had in the second half, North Carolina fortunate that that corner kick didn't curl its way into the net. Reached the midway point here in this first period of extra time as Louisville head coach Karen Ferguson Days trying to tactically maneuver her team, the all-time winningest coach at Louisville in her 18th season. So far this season, the best season that Louisville has had since moving to the ACC is that pass is too far in front of Dorian Bailey and will yield a throw. Otto. Ball won by Anderson. Now Dickerman. Dickerman trying to find a teammate. She finds Whitfield. Whitfield tries to nutmeg Wubin Moy. Anderson got a touch. McKinney finds Rivers. Good bit of progression from the Cardinals as Rivers finds Ferraro. Couple players in the box. Crosses headed out by Wubin Moy. McKinney wins the battle against Boyles. And now Ashley gets it out of harm's way only as far as Bierke. But Sproul's pursuit, and it's going to be a free kick to the Tar Heels as Gabby Vincent followed through on the challenge from Sproul. And so the Tar Heels will have the ball at midfield here in the 97th minute. Boyles very good at being a provider. She's had a couple corner kicks that have rushed across the face of goal. She's delivered good set pieces. And this time, it looked like Alinsky got the head on it and it's cleared out by Neve Nelson. Back towards Taylor Otto. Ruben Moy to Boyles. Louisville looking to make a change. As Boyles heaves it forward. The defenders for Louisville Get the ball up in the air. Buckingham couldn't control it. And a good awareness from Taylor Otto as Whitfield was behind her and could have been in to challenge the Carolina goal as Kayla Dickerman will come out for Morgan Dewey. And a throw for the Cardinals. Otto, Ashley. Ashley heaves it towards Sproul. Good header by Price. 
And now Rivers on the ball. Rivers trying to slot it through as Dewey gave chase. Good clear, good coming out by Leshnack. Leshnack has only had to make one save on the day. But her defensive awareness was key in that moment as Boyles tries to find Bailey and Kuzelos. Leshnack's opposite number one does her job. Here in the 99th minute. Again, if neither team scores, we'll have a two minute intermission and both teams will be back on the field for the second 10 minute extra time period. Now Anderson will track all the way back as we're now in the 100th minute. Anderson's long throw towards Dewey, headed by Andrew Jeske. Vincent and Sproul collide. And it's gonna be a free kick to the Cardinals. Cardinals now working quickly as there's 40 seconds remaining. And now Gabby Vincent will take their time as now Fergus, Karen Ferguson Day is telling Vincent to come, go forward. The last time these two teams played, the Cardinals won in overtime, upsetting the number one Tar Heels at home. This would be a big win on the road if they're able to capitalize on this set piece. Neve Nelson will send it in. It's short. Ball contested in the box. It's now out, and Buckingham will get it clear. And that will be the end of the first period of this two-period extra time session. Good chances for both teams. In the first period of extra time, Carolina with two shots, Louisville with one shot. As the Tar Heels had some good chances on corner kicks that were delivered by Joanna Boyles. As you see the Tar Heels getting a quick water break. Hoping to get some final words from Anson Dorrance, the head coach for Carolina in his 39th season. And the Louisville bench talking with head coach Karen Ferguson Days, trying to get themselves ready and amped up for this final period of extra time. This is the longest match that Carolina has played this season now. As both overtime games that Carolina played was ended in the first period of extra time. And majority of the Tar Heel players have played a good amount of minutes. Andrew Jeske, Ashley and Buckingham have played the full, and, and well as Leshnack, have played the full 100 minutes. Louisville with a short bench as well as the Cardinals are trying to win one for their fallen teammate, Amina Ekic, who came down with a left leg injury in the 84th minute. Obviously we feel for her as it's possibly going to be a season ending injury. Obviously she'll be very doubtful to play the regular season finale and any postseason action if the Cardinals were to make it to the ACC tournament. The freshman number 10 in red, leading the team with seven goals and three assists on the year. And this Cardinal team has done well in all different, all different phases of this match. From pressing this Carolina defense to defending these great attack, Carolina attackers. They've done their job in these 100 minutes against one of the best teams in the country, the North Carolina Tar Heels, who have won eight 
games in a row, 8-0 and in conference play. As Cardinals send it forward, it'll be a throw to the Tar Heels here in the 101st minute. Russo. Back to Ashley. Russo has come all the way back to try to help this development of play as now there's been a change as Taylor Otto has come forward and Alicia Russo is now part of the midfield as Otto and Boyles link up. Taylor Otto slips it towards Andrew Chesky. Looked like Ferraro, did she get a touch? She did and it's gonna be a corner kick much to Ferraro's disapproval. She thought it was a goal kick. But now Carolina gets a corner kick here in the 102nd minute. First corner kick of this period and ninth of the match. Dorian Bailey looked to deliver it into the box as several Tar Heel players will crash. Bailey's cross, headed down by Alinsky and it's a good save by Kuzelos. Olinsky got that ball right in front of the six yard box. And the senior from Rocky River, Ohio had a great chance to get the winner. Uh, Olinsky headed it straight down and Kuzelos came out to claim it. Carolina though back on the attack as Buckingham finds Bailey, Russo. Otto looking for it. Russo will take it herself. And it's always rising. Yields the goal kick and Cardinals will take a couple extra seconds off the clock. Louisville coming into this game with nine wins, one draw and six losses. Their best season since they've come into the ACC. In 2013, they had 12 wins on the year as part of the American Athletic Conference, the same conference that South Florida, Central Florida are a part of. As handball is gonna be called on Allison Whitfield off the forearm. Boyles wins the header. Price got on the second ball. Now Boyles. Good control by Andrew Jeske on that sharp pass. But Russo couldn't find it. McKinney finds Morgan Dewey. Dewey trying to get it into space. Though Anderson was marked by Goff. And now Leshnack gets it out to Buckingham. Bailey. Tracked by McKinney. Now back to Ashley. Julia Ashley, long ball forward. Otto, Russo headed out by Gabby Vincent. Russo looking to loft that ball over the top. Andrew Jeske will come onto it. Andrew Jeske has boils in the box. Vincent will hit it out. Another corner kick here in the 104th minute. This time, Joanna Boyles will take the set piece. Got Bailey and Goff and Andrew Jeske in the six yard area. And you got four other players looking to crash in as Boyles comes right towards in between the penalty spot and the six yard area. It's cleared out by Nelson. The target was Alinsky again. Here's Russo. Russo lost it in. Goff got ahead, but the flag is up off sides on Morgan Goff. Tar Heels again called for offsides. Third time they've been called offsides in this match. Brooklyn Rivers looking to check in on the next opportunity as Russo finds Bailey. Dorian Bailey cuts in towards the middle. Bailey 
Shot just went wayward. Didn't get full strength on that shot as now Brooklyn Rivers, number 13 for Louisville, will come in. For Morgan Dewey. Here in the 106th minute at Coca Booth Stadium, the Cardinals have played exceptionally well. So it looks like they're trying to hang on here in these final few minutes against Tar Heel Tack that will hopefully turn up the intensity in these final few minutes as Bailey finds Andrew Jeske. Pass over the head of Whitfield, Boyles. Looking towards Otto in the center, headed by Bierke. And Ferraro finds Anderson. Now Rivers. Rivers muscles off Goff. Good pass into space. Finds Kayla Dickerman. Russo and Anderson are forward for the Cardinals. Good challenge won by Morgan Goff, though for the Tar Heels. As Alinsky looking for Taylor Otto, who's the only Carolina player forward. As Carolina tracked back, now Otto looking to take it on herself. Taylor Otto down the far side. Boyles and Russo in support. Otto keeps the ball in play. Out by Bierke. Though it went off the head of Buckingham, and Carolina will keep it in the final third. Buckingham over to Bailey. Buckingham crossing it into the box over the head of Russo, won by Bierke. Andrew Jeske will track back. Ashley now the cross in the box towards Boyles. And Kuzelos will take control here in the 108th minute. Cardinals will obviously be happy with this draw. They were able to get a draw against Wake Forest in their last match. Wake Forest, another ACC team that's nationally ranked. But this would be even better as they've played really well against the better opponents in the conference. They've just come up short twice against Florida, against Virginia, and against Duke. As now Carolina has a corner kick, as Price did battle against Dorian Bailey. Joanna Boyles will now go, jog over to the corner, now in the 109th minute. As the Tar Heels fans make some noise. Same positioning for the Tar Heels. Boyles now cuts it in towards the box. Kuzelos had it to go over the line. No, says the line judge. Kuzelos claimed it was pressured, I believe, by Dorian Bailey. And again, the ball has to fully cross the line in order for it to be a goal. And the line judge said there was no full evidence that the ball fully passed the line. Now in the 110th minute, the final minute of this match. Carolina trying to get a late winner. If they can press it forward, four players forward for the Tar Heels. As Ruben Moy links up with Ashley. Now Andrew Jeske forward. Ashley finds Otto. Otto gets it out wide to Andrew Jeske, though it's too far in front. And now the Cardinals will take their time. Clock will now be stopped as TJ Anderson will provide the long throw. Headed by Ashley. No effort on the second ball as Vincent will just clear it. Rivers on the ball. As the PA counts the seconds away, 
And it's going to be a goalless draw. What a result for the Louisville Cardinals as they end Carolina's stretch of eight consecutive wins in ACC play. After 110 minutes, it's a goalless draw between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Louisville Cardinals. North Carolina had several good chances in the 20 minutes of extra time. Last golden opportunity came in the 109th minute, though Kuzelis kept the ball in play. Carolina gets their first draw of the year. Louisville with their second draw. Tarles with 25 points now in conference play. Louisville with 11. Carolina will be back in action on September 26th. Well, they will take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. So for my producer, Dylan Field, I'm Brian Ware saying thanks again for watching Carolina Women's Soccer on ACC Network Extra. To watch this game and all games on our platform of ESPN Networks, go to watchespn.com and download the Watch ESPN app. The final score, North Carolina nil, Louisville nil. And you saw it here on ACC Network Extra. Go to hell, too.